All right, hello and welcome back. This is continuation for the module one lecture. And so we were talking about various terms such as position, displacement, average velocity, instantaneous velocity, average speed, instantaneous speed, uh, as well as acceleration. All right, so this is a chance for us to, to look again at differentiate, differentiating between instantaneous velocity and average velocity. So if we look from A to B, the initial position is five meters, final position is 10 meters, starting time was zero, as I mentioned, a lot of times we'll start at zero, and let's say we'll call it 0 0.75 seconds for the final time. So the displacement, uh, final position of 10 meters minus initial of five meters is five meters, 10 minus five is five, and then five divided by the time 0 0.75 is 6.67 .6 meters per second. That's the average velocity from A to B. The instantaneous velocity at various points is gonna be different because this is a curve. And so here we can draw in a tangent line, say at point A, there it is. And now we can take the slope of this tangent line to find the instantaneous velocity at point A. Well, the tangent line, goes through this point, and then we'll look at this point right here, right, right above the B. I'd say it's approximately 14 meters, and it's at 0 0.5 seconds. So 14 meters minus five is nine meters. So nine meters divided by 0 0.75 seconds is 12 meters per second. So the object, whatever it is, was going about 12 meters per second at this point, but then you can see the slope of this line is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And then at point B, what is the slope of the, of the tangent line at point B? Well, the tangent line there is a horizontal line. And hopefully you remember the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So that means the instantaneous velocity is zero there. And then if we looked further, if we look at the instantaneous velocity, say here, right in between B and C, and I don't have a graphic to put in, but hopefully you can see my mouse here. That is a negatively sloped line. And then you go further along and it is a steeper negatively sloped line. So the object's getting faster and faster, but now it's going in the opposite direction or the negative direction. So hopefully that gives you a little more to go on in terms of instantaneous versus average velocity. All right, here's some more graphs that we can look at. And this is talking about what I was saying before, but now it's written down. The slope of the position versus time graph at any moment is equal to the instantaneous velocity. So again, we could look at some points here with a small positive velocity, and this is a tangent line at about right there, about two seconds. Small positive velocity, so here's a small positive number, that's about six or so. And then we look later on at five, at, well, this is not five seconds, about four seconds, I guess. So the tangent right here, this is a steeper line, which means it has a greater slope. And remember the slope of the position versus time graph is equal to the velocity, so a bigger velocity. So we took the, we calculated, or we didn't really calculate, we just talked about it, looked at the line, small positive slope for this line, and a bigger positive slope for this line, which is at this time period, about four seconds. And then interestingly, from this time right here, to this time right here, the slope remains constant. So if the slope is constant in here, that means the velocity is constant in those time periods as well. And that is represented on here. This is a constant velocity. At four seconds, the velocity was 16 meters per second. And then at five seconds, the velocity was 16 meters per second. And at call it seven seconds, the velocity is still 16 meters per second. Here we have still positive slope on this part, but the slope's getting less and less. And that you can see right here, the slope's getting less and less. And then right here at the peak, tangent line would be horizontal. So that's zero velocity. And then over on this side, negatively sloped, small negative slope here, bigger negative slope, bigger negative slope, which is what we're seeing right here, bigger and bigger negative numbers. So in this case, the velocities are all negative, 
but the object is speeding up. When I say it's speeding up, what do I, what do you mean? The graph's going down. That seems kind of weird. Well, think about how fast the object's going right here at 15 seconds. It's going zero meters per second. So if it's going to move, it's going to be speeding up because you can't go any slower than zero. How fast is it going at this time, say like right here? Well, if we look across, that's about five meters per second. And then later at say 20 seconds, the object's moving at about 10 meters per second. And then here at 23 seconds, the object's moving at about 15 meters per second. And yes, those velocities are negative, but the negative sign is just indicating which direction. So that's why I'm saying it's speeding up between here and here. And if we look, it's getting steeper and steeper on the position versus time graph. And that makes sense. It's getting steeper and steeper because there's more ground being covered in the same amount of time. All right. Then similarly, the acceleration is equal to the slope of the velocity versus time graph. Now I said, we're only gonna have constant accelerations, okay? But that's within each time period. So we look, we have uh, five time periods here. In this time period, the slope of the velocity versus time graph is a constant positive value. So here we have a constant acceleration that is positive. Here, the slope of this is zero. And we see zero acceleration. Here we have a negative constant value for the slope. Right? The, the slope of this is a negative constant value, straight line. It's pointed downward. And we have a negative constant acceleration. But oh, look, the acceleration continues to be the same here as it was here. So this whole time from seven seconds down to 23 seconds, the acceleration is the same. Even though the object changes direction, the acceleration doesn't change during that time period. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, is it possible for that to happen? Absolutely. We, we definitely have cases where that can happen. Um, an example in, in horizontal motion uh, could be a, uh, a little cart and with a fan on it. And if we push the cart so that the fan is acting to slow it down, the cart will get slower and slower. And then once the cart stops, it will come back the other direction and get faster and faster. In the vertical direction, we, we had much more common examples of that, which is if you toss something up, it gets slower and slower, and then it comes back down, it gets faster and faster, and it has a constant acceleration the whole time. And we'll get to that in module three. All right, so there's lots of examples in here of how you can use the slope of this graph to figure out the velocity, and you can use the slope of the velocity graph to figure out the acceleration. Okay, this slide has some, oh wow, that's a lot of stuff on there. Um, so I'm not gonna go through all of that, but it's more examples of the same things that I was talking about before. If you'd like, definitely pause the video here and take a look at it and let that help your understanding as well. Um, here you can see a plane flying, uh, not technically one dimensional motion. It's, it's, it, as it goes in for the landing, it's kind of close to one dimensional motion uh, on a slant. Um, or if we just looked at it only on the runway when the plane was just on the ground, that could be one dimensional motion. Um, so it's just another example of kinematics in our lives. Um, but there's two bullet, well, they're not bullet points, but there's two sentences down here. These are really important. When an object speeds up, its velocity and acceleration are in the same direction. And when an object slows down, its velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. So velocity and acceleration are both vectors. And when those vectors are in the same direction, whether they're you know, both to the left or both upward or both to the right, the objects, that's describing an object that's speeding up. But when the velocity and acceleration vectors are in opposite directions, whether that's left and right or up and down or whatever, that's describing an object that's slowing down. And we'll see this numerically. Um, and if you watch the, the video that goes with the note packet uh, for the, the motion, there are six motion diagrams where you'll be asked which way is the velocity, which way is the acceleration, is it something slowing down or speeding up? Uh, there's, there's calculations that go with all of those. And, and we'll do a, a little sample of those in this video as well, okay? So this is something good to memorize. There's not a whole lot of 
memorization in this course compared to like a biology one course or an anatomy and physiology course. But there, there are some things you need to learn like the terms, uh, but since you're allowed to use your equation sheet, uh, the, the equations are not something you need to memorize, but something like this is really important. And so let's look at some examples that go along with that. Here we have an, a car that has a velocity and acceleration to the right, it's speeding up. Those are both positives, okay? This is the positive x direction to the right. Here, car has velocity to the right, but acceleration to the left, that's describing an object that's slowing down. Here, the car has velocity leftward, but acceleration rightward, that car is doing what? It has positive acceleration. Is it speeding up because it has positive acceleration? No. Okay, remember, it's not whether the acceleration that's positive or negative that tells you whether the car is speeding up or slowing down, but how the velocity and acceleration are compared to each other. Okay, since the velocity is to the right and the acceleration is to the left, those are opposite directions. That's in, in example C there, that's describing a car that's slowing down. In D, car has negative acceleration. Does that mean it's slowing down? Absolutely not. The velocity and acceleration vectors are both to the left. And so that means the car is speeding up since the velocity and acceleration uh, vectors are both the same direction, both in the negative direction. That's a car that's speeding up. Like I said, in your packet, you'll get to go through those um, four examples plus two more for constant speed in both the positive and negative direction. And like I said, there's another video that goes with that. Here's a, an example, a car speeds up over a period of three seconds. What is its, its acceleration? So this is um, starting at zero kilometers per hour and it's going um, to a final speed of 30 kilometers per hour. So what's its acceleration? Well, the final velocity minus the initial velocity, 30 minus zero is 30 and then divide by three seconds. Oh, well that makes it kind of a weird unit Let's just say these were uh, meters per second instead. Uh, that, that'll make this simpler. So meters per second, meters per second. So VF minus V naught would be 30 meters per second. And then we divide by three seconds. 30 divided by three is 10. The units meters per second divided by seconds that the seconds do not cancel out there. You get meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Okay, so the acceleration for this example would be 30 meters per second squared. And again, I'm, I'm just chaining the units here. Uh, I didn't realize that before I started making the video. So we'll make that change, make it easier. In this case, same idea. And again, we'll do meters per second here, but here this is slowing down. This 30 meters per second down to a stop. Remember, delta V, V final minus V initial, so that would be zero minus 30. So negative 30 divided by three would be negative 10 meters per second per second. Okay, so here the acceleration is positive 10 meters per second per second. I apologize, I feel like I might have said the wrong number before. Okay, but 10 meters per second squared, and here negative 10 meters per second squared. So acceleration can be negative. Okay. Here we have a car that's moving to the left. And again, we'll change these units. We'll say that's negative 20 meters per second. And it slows down to a velocity of zero. Okay, and you're calculating the acceleration. So it's a, it's a car that's slowing down. And you might expect that the acceleration is going to come out negative. But remember, the acceleration has to be the opposite direction of the velocity. So that alone tells us it should come out positive. But let's see mathematically. That's also the case. Final velocity of zero minus negative 20 meters per second. So zero minus negative 20 is 20. And if that happens in two seconds, then you have positive 20 meters per second divided by two seconds. That's positive 10 meters per second squared. Okay. So another case where you see that we have positive acceleration, but the object slowing down, velocity and acceleration vectors in opposite directions. 
That's one of the most common misconceptions that goes along with this unit. People think, oh, negative acceleration, that has to be something that's slowing down. Not necessarily. Here we have positive acceleration for something that is slowing down, and the opposite can also be true. All right, and we'll just end with a couple more pictures of applications of kinematics. We could be using it to describe people in a race, um, how fast they're going at a particular time, what their position is, whether they're speeding up or slowing down. That could all be used to, to describe people in a race. Um, there are lots of scientists and engineers involved in uh, space travel. Um, of course, the, the space shuttle uh, fleet has been retired and now uh, SpaceX and other companies, Boeing, are uh, working on uh, vehicles to take astronauts into space and, and are, have been doing that successfully. Uh, but regardless, space travel is very complicated. Huge teams of scientists and engineers that have to understand kinematics really well. Uh, and finally, uh, some of you might be interested in racing. Uh, certainly drag racing is, is meant to be an example of one dimensional kinematics. If, if you're not going in one dimension, then, then things have gone wrong. Um, and that's really a phenomenal uh, acceleration that goes with these dragsters. Uh, that's a, that, I, I could go on and on about the amazing acceleration and, and we could get into some ca calculations that go along with that, uh, but I'll, I'll stop here. So if you have any questions, feel free to follow up with me. Uh, remember, there's lots of other videos for this module under the student note packet assignment. So please take advantage of those, but always try to do the work yourself first. Okay, You're going to get a lot more benefit if you've tried it yourself and given it your best effort before you go in and watch the video. Once you watch the video, yeah, correct anything you did wrong, but it's so much more valuable if you try it on your own first. All right. Thanks for watching.